Hi, brothers and sisters and friends. So, excuse my voice. I've just been getting real sick here lately. I've been sleeping and resting all day and just laying in front of my TV. Uh, I want to talk to you guys about the Kentucky Derby. Probably somewhere back in February. I don't even know how... Well, the Lord brought this to my attention, but I don't remember what the trigger was or why... It, uh, but I just started researching the Kentucky Derby, and I believe the Lord was trying to show me something. And so I thought, you know, maybe it's my imagination, or you know how your your thoughts kind of wander off with you and stuff. But I thought, no, there's something else. That the Lord's trying to show me something. The Kentucky Derby, and I and I knew it wasn't about gambling. <laughs> but um, so uh. I even got on and I was looking around. I was I was thinking, is a city go, is Kentucky gonna be bombed? What city is the Kentucky Derby in? You know, I was just researching the Kentucky Derby and uh, I was thinking um, uh, maybe the name where the city's at means something. And then I pulled up a uh, I remember pulling up a calendar. And looking to see what date the Kentucky Derby landed on. Because I was thinking it was going to coincide with something. And uh, I, I don't even think I'd even had uh, any dreams yet, really. I, haven't, I hadn't even had any dreams. I don't think I'd even had my first dream. Or I might have had my first one. And so I was just researching everything about, about the Kentucky Derby. Well, I was laying here on my my bed and the TV was going. I was just resting. I've been sleeping most of the day. And I happened to wake up and lo and behold, the Kentucky Derby's on. And I'm kind of groggy and I'm laying there. I'm just like, and then I remembered back. I remembered back what the Lord was trying to show me about the Kentucky Derby. And he, I just felt him just saying, watch this, watch. And there were, there were the women. And at uh, the part I was watching where was they were bringing the horses out. They were introducing the horses and the people, the jockeys and the people that own the horses. And they all had these beautiful dresses on. Just beautiful, like um, party or wedding, kind of Victorian wedding party slash, you know, all different but then there was this one woman, and um, uh, she brought her horse, and they were interviewing her. It was Keep On Dreaming was the name of the horse. And by this time, I knew the Lord was trying to show me something. And her dress was like this really pretty Victorian sun, because I'm just fascinated with everything Victorian. I always have been. I love Victorian. And she had this really pretty off-the-shoulder lacy Victorian dress on with a big beautiful hat and and uh, sh they were saying well what are the odds of your horse she was saying well I believe that everybody um, needs to keep on dreaming that's how America is and but you know just going on but I said keep on dreaming and then I said uh, I bet that horse is going to win the race and I kind of watched it for a little while longer. People, you know, talking about their hopes, who they were putting their hopes on their horse, you know, this and that. And everybody was getting excited. And and I fell back asleep. Well, when I woke back up, I just woke up and I was just kind of digging through a little bit about the Kentucky Derby here. And it's funny because this is like the 40th day. And uh, I know horses mean war. I, I made my my other video about that lame horse and Putin and everything and how, and I, I added into my comment section on that video that horses represent war too. I mean, back at the Bible days, you, you mounted your horse, you know, it's what brought you into battle. And uh, so, oh. Let me do this first. So then I was like, well, because then I seen um, that they were, the 
most famous, uh, I've seen a commercial of mint. It's the most, um, it's the drink that they drink. It's the mint julep. It's like the drink of the Kentucky Derby. So I just kind of was looking around, just letting the Lord lead me. Uh, mint. This name occurs only in Matthew 23, 23. And Luke eleven forty two as one of those herbs, the tithe of which the Jews were most scrupulously exact in pain. The horse mint and several other species of mint are common in Syria. Did you hear that? The horse mint? <laughs> and I'm sure what I'm getting isn't going to be everything that you might pick out. You know, the, the spiritual meanings. I'm, I know you're going to pull probably different things uh, out of this than me, but... Uh, Bible dictionary, a garden herb sufficiently known, the Pharisees desiring to distinguish themselves by a most scrupulous and literal observation of the law, gave tithes of mint, anise, and cumin. Uh, our Savior does not censor this exactness, but complains that while they were so precise in these lesser matters, they neglected the essential commandments of the law, making their punctiliousness, punctiliousness about easy and external duties as excuse for disregarding their obligations to love God supremely, to be regenerated in heart and just and beneficent in life. So they were, they were, uh, so wrapped up in the law, they forgot about his grace. Also to having a sweet smell. One of the garden herbs of which the Pharisees paid tithes. Uh, wild mint which grows much larger than the garden mint. It was used as a condiment and a, of a medicine. Paint ties of mint was in accordance with the Mosaic law. Uh, a place where money is coined by public authority. Any place regarded as a source of unlimited mint supply, the supply itself, to make by stamping as money to coin to make, make and stamp into money to invent, to forge, to fabricate, to fashion. A mint. Uh, let's see. I don't know. There's a lot. You could probably just... Peppermint, primarily intended, but the wild mentha or mint or horse mint, which flourishes all over the mountains of Palestine, is probably included. Okay, so I'm going to click this Greek translation here <coughs> it means sweet smelling and strong concordance uh, it's a noun uh, this is hey do osman hey do osman mint or peppermint and then it has two other words here osme and hedio sweet smelling Garden mint, uh, sweet smelling, a kind of odoriferous, odoriferous herb which the Jews used to strew the floors of their houses and synagogues. Sweet smelling. There's some things that popped out, like in Matthew, for ye pay, tie the mint and anise. Tie the mint and anise, okay. Let's see, okay, so I pushed Osme. Or Uzme, that's how it is. So, in this translation, a smell, an odor, a smell, odor, or savior, savor, aroma, fragrance, sweet smell. Now, in the Greek lexicon, the Strong's, here's what comes off of, on this one it says, such an odor as is emitted by death by a deadly pestiferous thing a dead body and itself causes death such as is diffused or emitted by life and itself imparts life uh, yeah so in all these there's always in uh, translations there's it's like the Lord always says here's the good and then here's the bad here's the life and then here's the judgment um So you can see ozo fragrance odor savior savor sorry 
Uh, with odor, with the odor of the ointment, maketh manifest the Savior of his, the one we are the Savior of death, to the other the Savior of life, for a sweet smelling savor, you an odor of a sweet smell. So this is getting kind of into a study of itself, and I, I encourage you to study this on your own. The meaning behind the mint and you know as I was reading this I was thinking of the rich man the parable of the rich man now a lot of th times I know the church has taught that the rich man is is Jesus but sometimes if we look at things in our spiritual eyes I believe the rich man was the system you understand like I don't know I think there's the Lord uses these and speaks different meanings to wherever we're at in our lives right now. Okay, so uh, let's see. There's something else too. So there's that one. Now I'm going to do the other one. Hedios or hey day os uh, as an adverb, gladly, pleasantly, properly sweet. Gladly received because so sweet to the beholder. Yeah, so. I believe a lot of this is talking about um, our weddings, you guys. Um, as the bride. And uh, judgment to the people that have not accepted him as the Messiah. Because there's lots of people at the Kentucky Derby, guys. There's lots of people running in the race to the kingdom. They're running their race to the kingdom. They're on their horses. They're grabbing on for life. They're trying to get to the, across that finish line. They're all trying to wear, get their dresses and their hats. They're all trying to bet on who's going to win the race. You know, it's subliminal. They're all trying to, to drink and drink that mint julep. You know, they're all just waiting and watching. We're all there. There's a lot of people that, you know, but the ones that aren't uh, believing on him and believing he's the Messiah and accept him into, his, into their lives. And, you know, they're not going to win that race. They're not going to get that wreath. They're not going to get that trophy, that crown that the, our horse, those horses get. So, this is something else interesting here, too, you guys. So, I typed this in. This is what I found. And then when I got up, I was like, yep, always, always dreaming one. <laughs> Kentucky Derby results, always dreaming the winner after dominating the field. Uh, the Classic Empire to claim the roses on Saturday by two and three quarter lengths. Always Dreaming has now won three consecutive races this year after finishing second, third in his first two races. So it just goes on, talks about how he won, but what I do want to, I was drawn, drawn to the names of all these horses. Okay, so the first one that won was Always Dreaming. Next one, looking at Lee. Battle of Midway, Classic Empire, Practical Joke, Taprit, Gunavira, McCracken, Gormley, Irish War Cry, Hence, Untrapped, Gervin, Patch, J Boy's Echo, Sonneteer, Fast and Accurate, Irip, or I Irap. State of Honor and Thunder Snow was last to cross the finish line. So I want you guys to think about those names because there's a reason why the Lord drew me to this Kentucky Derby. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you know, and keep on dreaming. Keep on walking in the spirit. Keep on hold tight to that horse because he's going to bring you across the battlefield across the finish line you're going to make it you know don't put those blinders on your horse put them on on the sides of your horse's eyes 
So they're not looking to the left. They're not looking to the right. They're not looking to see who's coming up behind them. They're just getting on down the track. They're running for their lives. They're ready to cross that finish line. They're ready to get that wreath around their neck. They're ready to get that gold. You know what I'm saying? It's symbolic. It's spiritual. And, uh, you know, afterwards you're going to drink down that mint julep. And uh, you're going to have your celebrating with your dress on and your big fluffy hat. And you're going to be walking on beds of roses. And uh, I just pray, I just pray in Jesus' name that the Lord, whoever's listening to this, the Lord would spit in their eyes. The Lord would spit in their ears. The Lord would spit on their tug. And that we would just keep walking in the spiritual realm. We would keep walking in his spirit. We would not live in our flesh. We would not see things in our fleshly eyes. But we would see things through the spirit. The Holy Spirit that he gives us. So we can just go about our day. And we can walk in this spiritual heavenly realm with him. Until we cross that finish line. Because that's what's going to bring us across the finish line. It's got to be him and his Holy Spirit. It's got to be the way we perceive the things that go on around us. All right. I love you guys. And I'm praying for all of us in Jesus name. Amen.